Hello, I'm Horace Dowdy in Lexington, Virginia, and each week I bring you a local history lesson by way of YouTube. And I encourage you to help me with this program. If you enjoy these history lessons, then share them with your family and your friends. Tell them to click on like, click on subscribe, and click on the little bell icon so that they will be notified when these messages come on. Today, the title of the local history lesson is Meeting House Lane. Most of us have difficulty visualizing this valley when there were no roads. During the first generation, there was hardly a wheeled vehicle to be seen, not so much as a wooden cart. People mostly walked, following animal plans, paths. That's the way they got here. And if they were fortunate enough to have horses, the path would accommodate one animal at a time in single file. And a pack horse could carry an average load of 200 pounds. And if two poles were added, dragging behind a fix to a willing horse, the load could be slightly increased. And when there came, our pioneer forefathers brought very few possessions. Roads were ultimately laid out from here in the middle of the valley to Williamsburg, Virginia, and one already existed to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Great droves of cattle were driven out of the valley to Philadelphia markets from the 1730s onward. Most of those early paths have disappeared. Some of them evolved into highways. The Midland Trail became Route 60. The Great Path is now US 11. But one path that has withstood the ravages of time and nature is Mickey House Lane, although it too is rapidly fading from living memory. And this lesson intends to preserve some of that history. On the western edge of the Rockbridge frontier lies a series of fertile valleys drained by Buffalo Creek and its tributaries. By 1740, homesteaders were appearing. Most of the people were Scot-Irish Presbyterians. They were serious about matters of faith, but rejected the official state church, the Anglican Church of England. They were called dissenters. To pursue their chosen religion, Buffalo Presbyterians would walk across the hills on Sunday to assemble at Hall's Meeting House on Whistle Creek, which then Lexington was not, did not exist, but it, now it, the area is just a few miles west of Lexington. And the trek, that trek required two hours of strenuous walking each way. Old records indicate that this practice continued for nearly 20 years. But a change came about, not because of distance, but because of danger. The French and Indian War encouraged the Native Americans to drive out all the white intruders. And by 1760, it had become clear that if settlers here were to survive, they must have secure shelters designed for defense with within every community. And on the banks of Buffalo Creek, a sturdy log fort was built. The structure was big enough to accommodate all who lived nearby. It quickly was recognized as a logical place for meetings, whether for fighting or for worship. And until 1773, it bore the title Upper Buffalo Meeting House. For reasons not recorded, that name was later changed to Oxford, a familiar classical title from the old country. Oxford Meeting House was visited so, regular, or so regularly by itinerant preachers, it became accepted as a primary place of worship. The paths of the Buffalo Creek community led to Oxford. One path was designated Meeting House Lane. It was heavily used by the settlers living along the mountain boundary to the west in an area later known as Collierstown. 
for an astonishing 90 years, Meeting House Lane brought more souls to Oxford Church than all the other paths combined. More roads eventually developed and brought changes. The Lexington Covington Turnpike was completed in 1832, connecting the Valley of Virginia with settlements far to the west. That major transportation road, wide enough to permit wheeled wagons, bypassed Oxford and passed through Collierstown. Rather suddenly, commerce and population were drawn to the road. The, the pastor of Oxford Church, Reverend A.B. Davidson, very enterprising, recognized a promising location. And there at the foot of the mountain, on the Lexington Covington Turnpike, before travelers began the steep ascent upward, or after they would come down from the west, was a natural place, and is a natural place to pause. The pastor and some of his flock built another meeting house there in Collierstown. It occupied a scenic knoll atop a huge limestone formation jutting out into Collier's Creek, and the visual impression of that formation is of a ship entering the waterway. They named that place of worship Ship Rock Shed. A few, few years later, it was expanded and given the name Ship Rock Meeting House. A village arose there where the sage coaches stopped. Commercial activity became self-generating. First came a tavern, then lodging, eating places, the village turned into a town, Collier's Town, complete with town hall, Masonic Lodge, the Cormoran Institute for Young Ladies, several mills, blacksmith shops, stores, and medical facilities, all in Collier's Town. Historic data reflect more than 30 commercial establishments thriving along Collier's Creek by the mid 1800s. By contrast, Oxford Church suffered neglect. Reverend Davidson continued to hold services there occasionally, but moved the communion where the official records of the session meeting to New Oxford, as Shiprock Meeting House came to be called. Old Oxford was completely abandoned. The flow on Meeting House Lane reversed direction. People of Buffalo, if they were to enjoy Sabbath services, were now required to walk from Old Oxford to New Oxford. And to this day, historians are frustrated when they encounter the Oxford name, which Oxford? There were two of them, only two miles apart. Certainly, certainly was assured, though, when the subject has to do with graveyard. Pioneers in the 1760s brought a custom with them to Rockbridge from the old world, the burial of their dead in the churchyard. On Buffalo, that meant old Oxford. Around the big fort, the community graveyard spread. Most of the graves were unmarked or marked with wooden markers that have long since rotted away. And when a small stone church was built Nearby, to replace the log fort, the church was closed. The cemetery expanded. But even during the years when the church was closed, burials continued. Old Oxford held a monopoly. People could be persuaded to walk over the hill to, to New Oxford for Sunday, but they insisted on being laid to rest near their loved ones because the Oxford Cemetery had been there for many, many years. In the winter of 1851-52, James Dove died in Collierstown, and in spite of heavy snows, his friends scheduled a burial at the only community cemetery at Oxford. The body was placed on a two-horse sled for the trip across Beating House Lane, and in those days it was the custom for the family of the deceased to provide a generous supply of whiskey for all who mourned. Funerals were turned into party time as people drown their sorrow in adult beverages. Old Presbyterian documents bristle 
with stern rulings attempting to discourage that practice. Those rulings eventually did prevail, but not in time to help James Dove. On that winter day, the bitter cold called for a cup of cheer. Grief demanded a second cup or more. And when all were assembled at the Oxford graveyard, they discovered that Mr. Dove was not present. The body had rolled unnoticed off the sled. Billy Moody and his uncertain crew retraced their steps on Meeting House Lane up the hill from Oxford and found the body lodged against a cedar tree. And this time they succeeded and the funeral went forward. In 1856, a brick church was built. 400 yards downstream from the ship rock. The name was changed to Colliestown Presbyterian Church, and it would have a cemetery. At the east end of Meeting House Lane stood the decrepit stone Meeting House and its 100-year-old graveyard. The people of Buffalo were determined to have a working church on the spot, and the presbytery finally approved the effort recognizing it as a new church developed. Stubborn farmers were also given permission to name the new church, and in a display of great common sense, they announced to Presbytery, the name of our new development shall be Old Oxford Presbyterian Church. Paved roads now connect Oxford and Collierstown. They meander along the streams and follow gentler grades. The routes are admittedly more convenient, but they are less romantic than Meeting House Lane, where first came Buffalo, then Indians, then tough Presbyterians on their walk to church. And from the pinnacle, they had breathtaking views of the Blue Ridge to the east and the Alleghenies to the west, with lush valleys in between. And whether the sermon that day was inspiring or not, such scenery made Meeting House Lane a worthwhile hike on the Lord's Day.